sir it is already very in detail discussed that uh, in various uh, even conferences and various even in the published data is also that the the no x are definitely effective and little bit the safer side as compared to the warfarin when you are preventing a stroke in atrial fibrillation so and you have a uh, very vast experience regarding the use of the no x in af condition so what is your take on that the no x are really doing the less bleeding as compared to the warfarin or the data may be differ as compared to the indian population no i believe that when we are talking about bleeding in relation to anticoagulants or antiplatelets for that matter we have to understand that if an agent becomes more potent either as an antiplatelet agent or as a anticoagulant agent it will certainly cause more bleeding that's a double edged sword and that's a trade off that you have to trade off between the thrombotic events and the bleeding events so when we are talking about noax causing less bleeding what we mean to imply and we should train the physicians and tell the physicians specifically that they are causing lesser bleeding and especially intracranial bleeding as compared to warfarin and standard therapies because of the simple fact that noax are more specific inhibitors of coagulation pathways whereas warfarin inhibits wide range of activities so uh, when we talk about lesser bleeding i believe one point that has to be emphasized again and again is that noax are causing lesser bleeding as compared to warfarin and overall certainly if the agent is more potent it will cause slightly higher bleeding so it the, when we use the term less bleeding we have to uh, put this point also that it is causing less bleeding as compared to warfarin that's my point on you on that okay so i think it's very well said it's a more potent then definitely effect is good then there is a more chance of side effects also as well now the, uh, the related to this bleeding part in warfarin definitely you have to measure the inr because it's a very variable when it's low when it's high so uh, the measurement it should be very regular and infrequently and according to that you have to change the dose now the claim on this noex part is that, that this practical issue is can be sorted out with the rule uh, with the use of the noex there is no need of inr monitoring so what is your take on on this particular aspect no it's true that i mean the uh Uh, the advantage which some physicians perceive with the use of uh, warfarin is that you can actually measure INR and it gives you some sense of what the anticoagulation parameters are like and how much have we and people become very comfortable if they get a warfarin uh, if the INR range in the normal uh, that they want it to be but that's one thing the f- another thing that has to be brought in this discussion is that uh, warfarin itself and the INR therapeutic window is very n- narrow and many a times all of us who have been measuring inr with oral anticoagulations with warfarin and with the uh, the other older anticoagulants uh, we have found that the inr measurement is highly highly unreliable and uh, the same patient over days and over a same day you can have various readings so this false sense of security sometimes may be uh, disastrous for the patient as far as patients not being sure uh, of anticoagulation profile on the newer oral anticoagulation it's like i mean uh, it's there all in the mind i mean uh, why don't we check antiplatelet activity when we are giving aspirin or clopidogrel for sense so if the drug constantly proves over a period of time and in large multicentric trial that is having efficacious as far as the anticoagulation effect is concerned i don't believe there is any rational of us uh, trying to uh, say that just because inr it we cannot assess by easy methods the amount of anticoagulation we should not uh, go forward in using it i mean it has been shown over the trial that even if you don't measure anticoagulation profile then to it works fine as far as the stroke prevention is concerned okay so it's very well said that regarding your concern on ina now the third thing is that reg- uh, bleeding definitely the warfarin has a major side effect of the bleeding especially the intracranial hemorrhage but it is also said that they have the antidotes so i think this even there is a be, there is a one belief is that, that this drug can be uh, it's effective but when it's going beyond the safety margin then we can have one uh, one arm in our hand to uh, to reverse the effect of a vitamin k antagonist and as of now the noex the antidotes are not available in india so when the bleeding is happening with the noex then what is your take on to manage this kind of condition yeah i mean uh, to many skeptics um, it would appear that uh, not having an antidote is a serious handicap with uh, the newer anticoagulants so firstly the antidotes are in the process of being uh, discovered and tried in various so we are having uh, newer antidotes of course they are not yet available for widespread clinical use and they are very expensive but on the other hand if you just uh, look at the clinical aspect and what are the clinical scenarios we are talking about 
I mean, many of these drugs are BID doses, so they are very short acting. So even when the bleeding occurs, and even when the catastrophic bleeding occurs, just stopping the drugs would, you know, kind of reverse the anticoagulation within 12 to 24 hours. So it is only those bleedings that can really, you know, kill the patient within the first 12 to 24 hours that we are talking about, and they are they are really limited bleeding. So they are close brace bleeding, large intracranial hemorrhage. But here again, once large intracranial bleed has occurred. I mean, uh, what antidote will probably bring it down? It's the management of uh, stroke and it's management of hemorrhagic stroke that will take precedence. And as it is, if you stop the newer anticoagulants, the um, uh, anticoagulation uh, profile would uh, improve within next 12 to 48 hours. And that should be it. So stopping the medication probably should do the trick. And in worst, worst case scenarios, the antidotes are really coming up. And in few years, we will see some antidotes for newer anticoagulants also. So definitely, that's we are also hoping for the some uh, recent antidotes. If uh, one is a, a already approved in USFT, and uh, second one is under the trial on the phase three trial. So very soon they will be, they should be available in India also as well. So I think now we have very crisp but in detail discussion regarding bleeding aspects when we are using the NOx. And uh, Dr. Sethi has given a very very wide uh, and uh, uh, experience. Uh, 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 experience solution is given when the bleeding is happening with the NOx, then what should we can do? Uh, what is the INR concern uh, regarding the NOx as compared to the warfarin? So I think it's a very uh, clinical rich kind of the discussion what we have as of now. So I think with this note, uh, we are ending our discussion. So thanks a lot, uh, Thank Dr. Sethi, for your providing valuable comments on this topic. Thank you.